Hi there, I'm Karen Dunn of KMD Productions. From the equipment manufacturers to the engineers to the business people behind the scenes, over the years, every member of the pro audio corner of the music industry has become family to me, and it's my job to bring the whole eclectic crew together. Each episode, I'll introduce you to one of these characters and open a window into my world of creating community in pro audio. Thanks for tuning in to One and Done. Today, I'm talking to Marcella Areca. She's a renowned engineer mixer based in Miami, Florida. I kicked it off asking Marcella what inspired her to move from a successful career working for others to partnering with Danja and opening their own studio. It's like you can't put a cap on creativity. So, you know, we were just in a place where we were frustrated and we're like, you know what, at some point in the near, well, in the future, I wouldn't say in the near future from that conversation, but in our future, we have to get our own, we have to get our own place so that we can create, create freely without, you know, someone telling us that we're on the clock, right? We got into right. a business to where, you know, we have a career. We, we don't just have a job. We have a career, which is something that we love. We aspired to do this mm-hmm. and we didn't go and get a job to where we had to clock in and out. And that's where, you know, for us, it was just like, it feels like we have to clock in. You know, if we, the record label says, what time do you want to start? Two o'clock. Okay. Two o'clock. So then they would communicate that to the studio manager, studio manager, that's their clock. And you have to clock in at that time. And by 2 AM, you have to be done. Otherwise now you're going into overtime and then sure. you get all the, ta, 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 you know, from, from the, from the record companies, like, right. Oh, you know, and, and we just got tired of it. So, yeah. Okay. So you were probably one of the first women owned studios. Mm. What kind of, um, challenges did you have going that direction was there um i don't know if uh you know just being a woman and 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 and, you know starting a plan like that i don't think it i I think it was just like any other challenges that would come with having to build a place from the bottom up you know it wasn't anything that i was um i worked with a wonderful team um i uh picked uh walter uh, walter stork design group john stork to design this studio, which is the one that you see behind me. Um, he was somebody that I admired his rooms. Uh, didn't matter where I was working, whether it was in New York um, or in Miami at the Hit Factory, like I loved his room. So to me, that was a no brainer. And when I had my initial call with his team, with John and his team, you know, it was such a respectable call. Like, you know, they really walked us through, Danger and I, they really walked us through the whole process, um, you know, it's, it's, it's scary, but he made it seem so seamless, almost like as if, you know, um, I kind of knew what I was doing. <laughs> you <know? laughs> so, you know, it, it, it's, I don't feel like I went through so many challenges other than, you know, the, the design aspect of it. I will say it changed a few times, you know, and it, it's because as you start designing, you're like, wait a minute. And then you start having these different ideas. But then that becomes a nightmare for the contractors because now you got to do change orders right. and it's like a lot. And and then that also puts, uh, you know, John's team in another, you know, they're like, wait, so now you want to do this? So, but they never made me feel like my ideas weren't um, worth anything. They were like, okay, we love that. We're just going to explain to you the, the pros and cons to what you want to do. Mm-hmm. And that was really it. So I really wouldn't say that there was challenges other than, like I say, like just my ever la- like my ch- my mind changes so much. And when you do projects like this, you have to be firm. Otherwise, you'll never open the studio, and your right. initial budget will increase tenfold. So right, right. So, yeah. is there anything specifically that you asked for in this studio that you don't? That's a Marcella piece in here that you won't find anywhere. Else? Um, so for me, it was like, and you're talking in my specific room. Yeah. Or in the whole or building. In the whole building. In the whole building. Oh, well, for me, I really wanted... So, so Dream Asylum is designed of three rooms. And this is studio, I call it Y. And then behind me is the live room. And directly, like if I draw a straight line across, um, is Studio X, which is Danger's room. So I wanted to really uh, build a space. I, I, I wanted to be able to... Because I'm, I'm more of a mixing engineer you know, in the last almost pretty much 10 years now, mm-hmm. like I, I do love the recording. I, I, it's something that to me is, is something that will always be in my heart and in my art. Um, but 
because I'm more on the mixing side, I still wanted to be a part of the recording process. So the way that I discussed um, this particular design was having the two main control rooms with the live room in between us so that I was still feeling like I had a part of the creative process of those that were in the live room recording, whether it was drums, vocals, uh, guitar, whatever. Um, so to me, that was something that I, I, you know, I had kind of put together as, as the idea, you know, like, mm -hmm. yeah. And would you do the whole process again since you've been through it once? Oh yeah, I would. Uh, I'm probably will actually. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, yeah, I probably would. I loved it. I loved it. It was stressful. You know, I was living in LA at the time, so I was flying back and forth yeah. a lot. Yeah. And, um, but I loved it, you know, and it, I, I love the design part of it. I didn't like dealing with contractors, but the design, <laughs> <laughs> like most people don't, but, uh -huh. um, but dealing with the design group is, you know, they're amazing. So Good. for sure, okay. I'll do it again. So I was thinking back how I met you. And I think that we met at the Pensado Awards, the first yes. Pensado Awards. And I think I was probably Caden's first babysitter. <laughs> you were. <laughs> I, I just remember wheeling him around. Luckily, I'd had three boys. So Caden, yeah. baby, he was so young. How old is he now? So Caden is now seven years old. And you met him when he was barely... Well, just about to turn two months old. Yeah, he was a tiny yeah. baby. Yeah, I was like, yeah, it was. I had just, I actually gave birth to Kate in in Italy, <laughs> so I had just flown back from Europe, maybe at the end of May, uh -huh. and then two weeks later, I was in LA for the Pensado Awards. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. So it was, yeah, it was a, a wild time in my life, you know. Yeah, with all that. So speaking of Caden. What's it like being a mom and such an in-demand mixing engineer? Because studio life is crazy, right? I mean, I know you're able to set your own hours because you have your own studio, but how do you how do you balance all of that? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, you know, really, it's it's really all about organization. Um, I'm really big on um, schedules and and sticking to them. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know while while Caden's in school, I try to, you know, definitely put in a good amount of time of, of work in the studio, which means I'll be in here as early as sometimes 9 a.m., 10 a.m. Uh -huh. um, and then that way, by the time he's out of school, um, by like 3.34, he'll be, you know, back home. You know, I'm able to have some time with him, you know, and and, and then still kind of go back and, and, and do a couple more things in the studio um, see, I, I'm not just an engineer and I'm not just a mom, but I also a, you know, a, a managing partner in a, in a independent record company. So right. yeah, it's a, it's a lot of, you know, balancing with my studio work with my mom life and my business side, you know, and just running it all seamless. So really it's just organization and never forgetting, you know, myself in the process. You know, I'm very big advocate on, on self-care. Um, I work out five, six days a week. Um, that just helps me mentally and, and, and physically, and it makes me feel good mm -hmm. um, all around. Um, and then beyond that, just, you know, if it's not the gym, I, I take care of myself, you know, like, you know, the things that we do as ladies, you know, our nails, our hair, just things that make me feel good, you know, and making sure that I have some time, you know, just quiet time. Like I like to read a lot. Um, and all of this is put in schedule, you know, uh -huh. waking up early and not going to bed too late. Cause I am also a big, big advocate of sleep uh -huh. don't know, after all these years I need, I, I'm only at my best if I have a, a, my seven to eight hours of sleep, you know, and, and that's like, that's like a luxury. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I've never had for over a decade of my career. So now that I'm, I'm. I've, I've understood that, you know, health before wealth, you know, like before it was the opposite mind of thinking, like mm -hmm. now, like if I'm not good, then I can't be great for my son. If I'm not good for myself, then I can't be great in the studio or in business. So I have to be able to take care of myself. And I really prioritize all this, you know, in scheduling. And I'm very like, I'm, like, I'm on it. Like I'm on it, you know? Yeah. It took me a long time to understand that you have to take care of yourself before you can take care of anybody else. Right. It's, it's a yeah. tough concept. I think especially as a mom, 
because you want to always take care of your kids, but you have to take care of yourself to be able to do a better job taking care of them. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. No, that probably, it probably didn't click to me until I became a mother. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, I did. I self-care was one of the things I want to talk to you about. Um, you go, you do go to the gym all the time. Yeah. You do a tough workout because I follow you on, on Instagram. Yeah. Your workouts are crazy. Do you enjoy working out? Cause I work out and if I'm swimming, I love it. But if I'm like at the gym, not so, once I'm there, that's fine. But the whole getting there is so hard for me. Yeah. Um, I love to work out. I, I think um, if the music, music business blew up tomorrow, I probably would be in the fitness business <laughs> um, because I love it that much. I love everything about it um, from, you know, you are what you eat and, you know, just taking, making sure that the right things that you're putting into your body and, and then the right exercise that is for your type too, you know, because for me going to the, I'm with you, Karen, like going to the gym is cool, right? Like, oh, I'm going to go to the gym, but I, I like high intensity workouts uh-huh. and I like stuff that's just really going to push me and challenge me, not just, all right, I'm picking up some weights and I'm doing my 20 reps. Okay. Now I'm doing, no, I need things that are going to constantly keep me like, like looking at this, looking at what I have to do and being like, wow, can I like, like, am I able to do this? No, you, you know, it's like a constant conversation with myself that I'm having, um, which in the end I'm always pushing myself. And I think that's the part that I enjoy the most is, is the challenge of, of those, those intense workouts. And, and I don't want to stop, you know, like, I don't, you know, I don't want to, I, I, I want to still work out until, you know, my time is up on earth. <laughs> sure. Yeah. You know, I want to keep everything nice and, you know, oiled up. <laughs> right. Yeah. And you got to, cause you want to, you want to have that quality of life when you get older. Yeah. Right? So I, I've been in competitive sports. I was in competitive sports from fifth grade through college. I'm mm -hmm. totally competitive. Um, I, I had a hard time as a mom, not like beating my boys in sports all the time because I thought that would be bad to do that. Right. Um, but I'm very competitive with myself. It's if I go work out, if, um, if I'm doing an event, whatever it is, I set goals and I try to get them or be above them. So when you're in the gym, is it you're, are you competing against yourself? Do you set goals and you try to do better than what you're setting? And does Absolutely. that translate into the studio? Absolutely. I'm, I'm my biggest competitor. I'm my biggest critic. I'm uh, it's me, you know, it's me against me. <laughs> like, right. you know, I, I look at everybody else as just my colleagues or, you know, when it comes to business, but in the gym, I am my biggest competitor. I want to beat the last thing that I did. If I did, if I was able to do something, uh, at a weight of 25 pounds of dumbbells in each hand, then, you know, I want to work to that 30, you know, like I want to keep pushing myself to where, you know, I don't want to be big and bulky, but it's more about the mentality, right? right. Like I don't want to be complacent. Right. And that's, 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 that word and that action scares me beyond that being complacent. I mean, even when I see my employees, you know, when, the, you know, when you first hire somebody and they're doing such a great job and then all of a sudden, like you just start to see their work, just like, it just doesn't like there's, you know, they, that uphill, like, you know, just that greatness about them just starts to like either decline or plateau. And it's because of complacency, you know, it's like, I don't like that. Like I, if, if I'm complacent, I'm bored, right. you know, and, and I can't, I don't like to be bored, you know? Yeah. And, and the same thing goes, you know, you asked me like, does that translate in the studio? Absolutely. Like for me, I'm always constantly trying to, if I'm working in a certain workflow, which it's funny that I we're talking about this because like the last few days I've been kind of in this, I want to switch up the way I work, you know? And because after a while, like I'm starting to feel like um, I'm approaching things a little too, like too similar. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be like that. You know, I, I, as, as a mixing engineer, I want to bring something to unique, unique to every record I, I mix. But if I'm working the exact same way every time, I feel like I'm starting, to, you know, it's like, it's almost like I'm going to those same, those, right. that same thought process. I'm going to that same plugin. I'm going, you know, it's like, it's like, no, 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 no challenge yourself so absolutely like i'm i think it's definitely I, the person i am in the gym is the person i am in the studio and it's the person i am as a mom too yeah you know See, i want to be the best mom yeah for me good enough is not good enough i right. think if you're that if you're happy with that no i'm not yeah. happy with that i'm always trying and it sounds like that's what you're like too 
Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm harsh on myself. Like, and that's what, and you know what, that's what, you know, when you, when you take time for yourself, um, you, you, when you really think about you as a person, you know, when I do, like, I, I think about me, it's like, I, I have to have these very reflective moments, like as mm-hmm. if I'm looking in the mirror, right. And, and I'm just, or and sometimes I am looking in the mirror and having these moments and just really having an honest, like, you know, realization of where you are and what I'm doing. And can, like, could I be better in this moment? And the answer is always yes. Yeah. And figuring out what that is, you know? Um, and, and, and that's the only way that as, as humans, we can really grow in, in my, in my opinion, in my, mm-hmm. you know, and how I understand life, I guess at this point, you know, I've been on earth now 40 years. So <laughs> yeah, but growing is changing. A lot of people are afraid yeah. of change. Change yeah. is tough, but is tough, I think it's it necessary. Is. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it doesn't mean that it has to be this drastic thing. It just no. it could be little subtle, you know, just little things that, that you can just change. And then it makes you start to see like everything kind of shift and, and work for you in the, in the better. And you right. never thought it would. Right. So, so yeah. how did you, or when did you decide, figure this out about self-care and how that would help your entire life. Cause I can't imagine you were always been like that, right. Especially younger, mm-hmm. it was all work, right. And just getting ahead that way. So what made you change? So I, I, I know exactly when this happened. Um, I was probably in the, in the music business at this time, maybe about three years. And I remember I went to Virginia beach to work with Timberland and, um, you know, at this time, the seven days a week, 20 hours a day, no sleep, eating like crap, you know, mm-hmm. and, 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 but, but, but like, I'm having this amazing like career and time and I'm flying on private jets and it's just like, wow. So I'm in Virginia beach and I'm there with Tim and Danger and Carrie Hilson. And, you know, we're, we're just there for weeks at a time. We rent an apartment on the beach. Life should be good. Right. Right. And I remember being there and just this feeling of sadness just loomed and, and, and hovered me so much. And I couldn't figure out what was happening. Right. I was like, I don't get it. Like what's going Like what? Like I started to question myself and, and have honest conversation with myself. And, um, I just realized like, you know what? Like I'm not taking care of myself. Like something I have to do, I have to give. And when I got back from Virginia beach, I, I basically was depressed. I like, you know, uh-huh. well diagnosed, right. I don't, I never <laughs> went to a doctor at that time to really get it under wraps. But in my mind, I'm like, I'm just sad. And I shouldn't be sad because this is my dream that I'm living and I'm sad. And like I said, the private jets and the, this and the, that. And so I got back to Miami after that trip and I got a personal trainer. I went to the LA fitness down the street from where I live and uh-huh. just grabbed a personal trainer. And I ended up working with this guy and he just, it just, everything changed for me. And I was, at that time I was like 23, 24 years old. You were still really young then when you I was came still really to that young, realization. Yeah. 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 I was, yeah. But I mean, this isn't like an overnight success, you know, right. it's like, okay, I get in the gym and in the beginning it's, it's tough. You know, it's like, I don't know if I like this, uh-huh. but then again, my inner voice, just keep, keep going, you know, like just try, don't just give up. That's another thing that I'm, I'm big on, like not quitting things, you know, trying to see right. things through. And, um, I just kept, kept it going until eventually, like I started to feel the difference Then I started to see the difference mm-hmm. and then knowledge and understand and then the trainer teaching me things be outside, you know, there, there's stuff that you learn in the gym and then how to eat correctly you know, how to balance your life, you know, in a, in a, in a world where you're not sleeping normally, like most people, and, right. you know, like putting the right things in your body. And you know, like I said, like having this knowledge in the beginning, I got it. I understood it. I didn't always all the way apply it. And it was those times where I was like applying it and I felt great. And then I'd fall off a little bit mm-hmm. and then I wasn't feeling so great. And I'm like, wait, and then I started to just be like, you know what, this, this is, I like this. If I can stay on this, like, I don't, I, who knows where I'm going to be. And now that's been almost like basically 15 years yeah. that I started this journey with fitness and just self care, or at least the beginning of it, you know, and then it's just been step by step each year. And now it's just at a, it's, it's a lifestyle now, you know, right. like my, it's a lifestyle for me. It's not, 
when people say, are, are you on a diet? No, I, I don't diet. I just, I have a lifestyle. Like, you know, it's mm-hmm. like, I, I, I like to eat, I like to drink more water than I drink wine, believe it or not. You know? uh-huh. um, I, I, I like to eat good food. You know, every once in a while, of course, I, I love, I love pizza. That's like my, you know, my, one of my biggest vices, but like, I love to eat like crap, but you pay the price for that, you know, right. mentally, Definitely. physically, and emotionally, eventually. So, yeah. So for any young engineers coming up, what do you recommend for them? This, you know, self-care wise, because it's got to be hard if you're really young and you are trying to get ahead, you know, to think, oh, I need to take time for myself. What advice do you have for those people? I mean, I feel for, for the younger generation that are really trying to get put on, obviously they they got to show and prove they're in that position where, you know, they're probably going to be doing those 20 hour days. My advice would be, you may not have the time to do all the luxurious things like I get to do now, right? 20 years into my career, right. I'm able to have these, these, these moments in my, in my life now. But the one thing that you can do is take the 10, 15 minutes out of the day to do that self-reflect so that you're able to have it in the back of your hand, have that in the back of your head and have it in the chamber so that when you are ready to like, you know, do those things, you can like attack it in that way, you know? Right. Um, because if you just, Oh, I just don't have time. I don't want to think about it. You are like, you're doing yourself a disservice, you know? And I think like self care is, is something that is so it, it's, it's major in this business. This, bu- mm-hmm. this business is not for the faint of heart. It is, it is very cutthroat. It is very tiring, um, and it wears on you. And if you don't have something to feel like to, to fall back on that is going to uplift you and make you feel better, or have an understanding of, of things that you can do for yourself, um, you know, I, I will say it can it can be a dark it can be a very dark time or dark road that you'll go down um, because this business will eat you alive. Like, you know, it will. Yeah, yeah. You got to look out for yourself. Yeah. For sure. So you said earlier that you like to read. What kind of, I'm a huge reader. So what, what kind of books do you read? Well, so I've gotten back into like novels, right? Cause I love, yeah. Like for a long time, I used to like read things that like I wanted to learn and that's cool too. I, I, I have those kind of books, but what I've been enjoying about reading novels is the, is being able to read and picture what is being is happening like you know it's like your your mind goes in a different place that and and it uses a different part of the brain that right. is such a creative um outlet for me you know because it creates everything that i'm seeing on the page like it, i'm seeing it like as if it's on the tv and I, I don't know there's something that happens there it's very beautiful and magical so i'm in the novels right now um i'm yeah. a huge fiction fan. So I'm totally with you. Have you ever had an experience where, um, like you're reading a book and they're somewhere set wherever it is and it's raining outside and they're talking about the gray and the rain and everything. And then you get up from your book and it's not raining. And it's just like, wait, it's not raining. Cause you're just so engrossed. Yeah. In the whole story. yeah. That's yeah. Really it, the best. It, it's very trippy. Yeah, no, I love that. Absolutely. So do you have any favorites, anything you'd recommend? Um, well, right now I'm reading, uh, one, it's called the Testaments, but I'm like in the beginning and it's really good. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it's not like a church thing. It's, uh, yeah. it actually is, um, uh, what is that show that's on TV? The Handmaid's Tale. It's from the author of that. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah I read that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So um, let's let's go back a little bit. Why don't you? Um, how do you decide you want to be an engineer? And and why don't you talk a little bit about just how that all started? So uh, the engineering um, wasn't something that I thought I would do. Right, basically, my I didn't know it was it even existed as a job. Yeah, um, it was my pursue. I wanted to pursue a career in music, but I didn't know exactly what that was. And um, I was introduced um, after so many uh, closed doors uh, from other colleges of me wanting to pursue something in music. And because I didn't, I wasn't a professional player or I, whatever, whatever, they were like, the programs aren't for you. Mm-hmm. So eventually, uh, about three, two, like two and a half years after high school, um, I was introduced to Full Sail. 
um, from my older brother who was going to school down the street at UCF. And he just said, hey, there's a school out here not far from where I, from the, where I live. You should drive up here because I was living in Miami. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was, you know, it's in Orlando. Right. He's like, you should drive up here and check it out. I don't really know what they do. I just, I've heard that they do music and maybe it's something that you'll like. Like literally it was like the most base, bare information. Uh-huh. And um, so I did it. I came, I went up there on a weekend and um, it, it blew my mind. And 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 I I had my aha moment right then and there, um, during a behind the scenes tour that they do, um, uh-huh. weekly or monthly there, and it was, you know, to step into a studio that looked like this for the first time, and just have every kind of energetic, like, power in the universe tell you like this is where you belong. I don't know how to explain it. It was like. That's why I got like your aha moment, like, oh, my right. God, you know, it's like the angels were singing in the background. And I said, I want to do this. I want to work in this room. And um, even at that time, I thought I was going to be a producer. I was like, I want to be in this room making music. So I ended up, you know, going to Full Sail and learning, went into the recording arts uh, program. And then I started to learn everything about uh, the recording arts from on the engineering side. Ground zero student. I didn't know anything. I didn't even know what an XLR was. You know, <laughs> I didn't know, you know, what a dynamic microphone was. I didn't know what a condenser and I literally was learning everything. From the and ground. it wasn't intimidating for you to go in with no knowledge at all. Um, I, I wouldn't, I was it's nerve. I was nervous, but I, I wasn't like intimidated by it. I was like, I, I, I like challenge, Yeah. but I was nervous, you know, I was just like, Oh my gosh, am I going to get this? And mind you, Full Sail is an accelerated program. Right. They, you know, it's very, it's very fast paced. Um, but I, I committed, you know, I made a commitment to myself. Um, it was my dream and I wanted to do this. So, you know, it was, it was pretty easy. And I, as I got into the program, I, I was very intrigued by the role of the engineer. And um, I just started to just really focus on, on that side of it and loving the recording process um, back then. And I would start recording. I remember bought some equipment in my apartment and just started recording some local people in, in Orlando uh-huh. and, um, and just love that, that interaction between the creative and like an artist or even a producer. I just, mm-hmm. I, I loved that dynamic in a room. So I, you know, I wanted to be an engineer, a music. I wanted to be a recording engineer. I knew that. And then later on, I didn't even know I wanted to be a mixing engineer because, yeah. you know, I took the steps. I didn't, I never wanted to skip over. I wanted to learn everything. And that's another thing that I try to tell the younger generation. Right. And, and, and I'll get into that in a second, but like, I took the steps, like I wanted to be a recording engineer so I could know everything and be a master at that. And then after a few years, you know, I started working with Jimmy Douglas mm-hmm. as his assistant and in the hit factory. And I just was beyond like blown away by the mixing process. I loved everything about it. I, I just saw it as something that I wanted to pursue. So I started working on my mixing craft through uh, my rough mixes of when, things that I would record. Mm-hmm. I would just, you know, be like, all right, now I need to do a really crazy rough mix. And then those rough mixes ended up being very, you know, highly recognized by like producers like Danger, Timberland, Polo the Dawn. They would be like, you know, that's, it was those rough mixes that got me to mix my very first album, which was the Carrie Hilson in a perfect world album, because I was working with her as a, as her recording engineer for a while. And every rough mix that lived on her project went through me. And these were the mixes that like the the label, her management, you know, producers were listening to. And they were like, and I remember Tim said to me, like, you got to mix Carrie. Like he's like, no, I don't know anybody that can mix Carrie's vocals as good as you. And that, you know, it just, it, it transitioned, you know, I, mm-hmm. I held the recording and mixing hat for a long time and that was very difficult to balance, you know? Um, uh, eventually I had to say, you know what, like I need to, I got it. I want, I want to, I want to mix, you know, I want to focus on mixing and, and that's where I'm at. You know, I'm a mixing engineer now. That's where my, 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 I, I love it, you know? And, so, and it doesn't hurt that you can uh, make your own schedule on it too. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so knowing recording engineering so well, does that help you with your mixing? Absolutely. Oh yeah. 
Absolutely, because I understand um, color of sound. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I know what a bad recording sounds like. I know when I, I, I get uh, depth of a recording, like it's, it's, it's helped me tremendously. Um, and, and it never leaves you, you know. I, I, it's not that I don't record whatsoever. I minimally record, but like right. I, it's, it's in me, you know. It's like it's part of my DNA. Right. You know, they they say, what do they say? You need 10,000 hours to become a master at something. Well, I exceeded way beyond 10,000 hours of recording. Right. So um, it definitely helps out with the on the mixing side because I just have a total understanding of what's in front of me and what I'm hearing. And I always think having, knowing what the big picture is, even though you only do one part of it, it's helpful when you see everything and you know everything else that's going on. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like, and that's what I'm. When I try to with my my young mentees, I you know so many on this younger side of the generation in music. Everybody wants to jump out of school being a recording, mixing, and mastering engineer, all in all in one. <laughs> like everything. I, I just got. I just graduated, and then you get their you get their resume, or you get their business card, or or their electronic press kit, whatever they created. And it's all three. They're 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 all three right then and there. It's like, yeah. you know, and and I don't want to, you know, dismiss what people can or can't do, but again, you know, how if you're if you're focusing on all three, right, and you've only been doing this for two years, right? How much have you really learned on on each one? Right. You don't so, have ten thousand yeah. hours anywhere. No, I never say to people, I'm a mastering engineer. There's a lot of mixers out there that say that they're, they're mixers and masters, and they probably are, no, I, but I am not a mastering engineer. I leave that to a mastering engineer because that's what they do. You know, if you, if you want me to do a rough mix and make it loud, I know how to make it loud. That's not a master. Right. I'm not a mastering engineer and I won't pretend to do it ever just so I can get paid a little bit more. I, I just yeah. won't. I can't do yeah. it. You yeah. know? So we were talking earlier and I told you that I love the pro audio community. And Mm -hmm. um, one question I ask everybody is what does community mean to you? So what does it mean for you? Community for me is, uh, you know, in, in, I guess as, as a broad is the people around you, you know, the people that, that, you know, are, are within your world, you know, um, or even not even like, you know, if it's, if it's just anybody that really is a part of your daily life, whether they're 10,000 miles away or two miles down the street, you know, I, I think the word community stretches beyond what is in close proximity right? Um, due to technology, you know what I mean? So I have a community that I like to call that are, you know, across the seas, you know, that Mm -hmm. are great, um, students of mine and, 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 you know, just, or fans of things that I've done. And to me, it's, it's like, you know, those that, um, are, are an understanding of, of your world and you understand theirs. And it's just like a, it's a big pot of love. (laughs) Right. Yeah. 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 Um, you're a active advocate and mentor for the next generation, next generation of women, uh, engineers. You always do speed mentoring with me if you're available. Um, and I've seen you do a bunch of other events. Why is this work so important to you? Well, it's important to me because I've been, I've been in that position of, of, of the, you know, whether you're young or not, you know, I've been in the position where. You know, you want to, you, you're, you're seeking out to, you know, pursue a dream and not, ha- and, and, and you just don't know how to connect the next dot. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I did it in a time where I, we didn't have stuff like this. You know, we didn't have iPhones. Um, you know, I think when I first started, I still had a flip phone, you know, we weren't uh-huh. communicating worldwide like that. Um, I didn't have, you know, a, a, bunch of women, other engineers to come and say, Hey, put their arm around me and be like, everything's going to be okay. You know? And, and that's a scary place to be. And, you know, I, I, I had to go through that fire and, you know, I, although I do feel like people should, you know, you know, 
be challenged or really not think that this is going to be an easy breezy world to be in. But I also think it's helpful to have somebody there that you know you can lean on and and talk to. And that's what my mentees are. You know, they're there. They, I have, you know, I have people that I've mentored for years and they still call me, send mm-hmm. me a text. Hey, you got a minute? That's all they want. They they yeah. just need to, you know, they need your perspective on something, you know, and for me, like it's, it's big. And, and those that are in the more um, younger side of things where they're like, I think I want to do music and just sharing, you know, my side, my story, my journey, and maybe that allowing them to pivot to say, wow, I want to do that. That's, that's mm-hmm. cool. That's dope. Or I don't know, you know what, after talking to her and that's okay too, you know, because right. now you're clear. It, there's nothing like I, I grew up so unclear other than like, even, even when I said like, I wanted to work in music, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was unclear mm-hmm. because I wasn't taught anything. Like, no one ever taught me about what an engineer does or even that there was an engineer in the room. In my mind, as a, a as being young and listening to music, I, th- I saw a producer and an artist. That's never knew that there was a third person in the room that was controlling everything. Because in my mind, I guess I thought the producer did it all. Right. right? And so yeah. um, it was later in life. I had to self-teach myself and just kind of do my own research and so in all these things. And it's just a very, it's important that people know that, you know, this this business it's it it's, can be scary, but you don't have to feel alone. Right. You know, I want I want people to feel like you know, like this is a community. Going back to your word, right. you know, right. this is a community, and and we're here for each other. You know, we're not here to, at least I'm not here for it. Like I'm I'm here to just embrace it. You know, and if you have want to have a conversation, let's have a conversation. You know, and it it doesn't take nothing to to do that you know right take 30 minutes out of my day like okay but when I get done after that 30 minutes it's given me so much that you know you can't even put that in into you know dollars and cents yeah because you know you've done your part right so over the years women's roles and recording that's evolved and the conversations I've heard have gone from emphasis on complete neutrality visually for you as a person, as a woman in a studio to actually having a presence as well. You always dressed great when I see these photos, at least for in your Instagram, you always are dressed. You look great. That's all the time. <laughs> when, well, whatever you post looks good. And when I've seen you in person, you always are put together really well. Um, have you ever, have you had to navigate this during your career? Have you always been like this? Have you ever had any issues? Um, I feel like, you know, when I first started out, you know, it's like working with any other employer, right? You don't go to work and it's like, you're just like, you, you dress appropriately for your employer. Right. So I think at the beginning of my career, obviously as like a general assistant, I dressed professionally or as professional for studio life, right? T-shirt, right. jeans type thing. Right. Yeah. Um, and then as my career started to take off as a freelance engineer, I mean, outside of the studio, this is what I dress like. So, you know, if I'm working for myself, I'm still going to be professional in the way I dress, but I'm, I'm not going to like, I'm going to be a little bit more in my, in my comfort zone on what that is, you know? Right. And, you know, I, I have grown, I grew up with two brothers. I know what it's like to be the only girl in the room. Okay. And you know the message that you send as a woman when you're around a group of or a room full of men. So you have to, you have to be smart. You know, be if if, if dressing a little bit more freely is your thing. Know that if you're entering a room full of men, I mean, men are not going to just be like, <laughs> you know. So if you're, it, it just know that if attention is what you're maybe not trying to get, you're going to get it. Mm -hmm. So figuring out what those lines are, you know, like, okay, like, you know, I, I'm always, you know, in the studio with a tank top, but I always have like my hoodie, right. Not because 
I might get cold or maybe I just feel like, oh, somebody that's walking into my room that I don't really know as much. I just like to, you know, I just kind of sure. play around with it. Like I don't overthink it. I think it's just something that I've just done by second nature now. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I've never gotten like I've never I've always carried myself in a very like, you know, respectful way. Although, you know, I've, I've, I've I remember there was a time period where I would come to the studio and like heels <laughs> and my partner and I, we laughed about it the other day. I'm like, you remember when I used to go to challenge <laughs> like every session, like five inch Louboutins. He'd be like, yeah, you were like, funny. <laughs> he was like making fun of me. I'm like, what the heck? I'm like, what was I doing? And he, he was like, you were just feeling yourself. I said, I guess so. Like, because a big part of doing a, your job and doing a great job, especially as a mixer you want to feel good about yourself, you know? Yeah. And if I'm walking in here with t-shirts and sweatpants, but I don't really want to, then I'm, I'm not going to feel good. If I right. want to wear that, then I'm going to feel good about wearing it. You know, it's like, it's all about what you feel good in. But just remember, if what you feel good in is a bikini top and some shorts and you're in the studio... <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm not yeah. saying, I'm just saying, like, you know, just know what, you know, just kind of have to know. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's just nature, right? Right. It, for right. how it is. So, but yeah. Okay. So, um, I see also on your social, not that I stalk you, but you're up there a lot. So <laughs> you travel a ton, right? Mm hmm. So do you have a favorite place? And is it for work or is it just pleasure when you're when traveling? I travel? Yeah. Um, it's both. It's both. Um, a lot of times it's work and then I try to make uh, some time in for some fun. Um, and then a lot of it is personal too. Um, I love any, anything in Europe really is my favorite place to go. I love Europe. Um, mm -hmm. My favorite country would probably be Italy. Not just, I mean, of course my son was born there as well, right. but. I love, I love everything about that culture. I love every, I love the people. I love the food. I love the scenic. I love the history. I mean, it's just a place that is so close to me and my soul that I see myself retiring there, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's where, you know, I'll live my rest of my days at some point. But, um, you know, I, I, I love to travel. That's a big thing for me. And, 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 now being a mom is showing my son the world as much as I can. Yeah. I didn't have that growing up. When I grew up, the first time I was on an airplane, I was 12 years old and I went to San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And then the next time I was on the airplane, I think I was like 19, 20 years old. Like I didn't, we didn't travel. Like my parents would do more of the Florida. Okay, let's go to the Keys or let's go to right. Orlando, that kind of thing. But right. I wasn't shown the world. So as soon as I was able to, I went crazy. Like I've been everywhere from, you know, so many different countries in Europe. I've been to, I went to Ibiza early in that crazy, the EDM dance uh -huh. like back in 2003. I was like, Oh, I'm going to Ibiza, you know? <laughs> um, I've been to all the Caribbean islands. I travel a lot in the States. Like I love snow cause I don't, I don't get it here in Miami. So, you know, I love to snowboard. So I'm very active mm -hmm. and I love to feed my mind. I love to teach my son. Um, just all the different things in the world that there is to offer besides Miami, Florida. Right. <laughs> right. You know, so. So, okay. This last question and, and it's actually my favorite one. Um, so if I'm coming to Miami and we're going to hang out, I want to know where we're going to go eat, what we're going to be eating, what we're going to be drinking and what are we going to be talking about? <laughs> Let's see. Okay. You're coming to Miami. Where are we going to go eat? Mm -hmm. We will probably eat. Oh my gosh. I love Mexican food. So I'll probably take you to a Mexican restaurant. Uh, gosh, I'm gone blank right now. So right now I'm going to say Paquitos, which okay. is only in North Miami. But I love okay. it. Um, so, which means we'll be drinking margaritas or tequila. Perfect. Um, I love tequila and yeah. it's an upper, so it's always keeps me in the party. Uh -huh. um, and what was the third? What are we even oh, talking about? What would we be talking about? 
If it's me and you, Karen, I mean, I'm sure we'll be in the world of town. Who knows? <laughs> what are you working? I, have, I mean, I think you, we would talk about everything and anything. I, you and I have such great dialogue. Yeah. So I think we would start off with things that are happening in the audio world, and then we would just transcend that into where do you want to retire? <laughs> right, right. Or, you know what I mean? Or, or just share our, our experiences and things that we've, we've done. Um, yeah. and who knows, Karen? We, we got to do a, this. We have a good time. We have a good yeah. time. So. We got to get this pandemic to be gone because I need to go to Florida and there's no way Please. I'm going right now. And I'm, oh, and I'm sure we'll be talking about sports. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll be talking about sports. <laughs> so just Andre, this is my favorite thing. I like screamed when I heard Andre Iguodala was coming back to the Warriors. Oh, my gosh. I was so thrilled. Yeah. Listen, he, it's, it's, he's a good fit there. He's a good he fit. is. And it's a good place to go for him to go retire. Okay. So speaking of sports, what do you like most? What sport do you like most? Cause you, I'm not, I don't like football. I don't really care. I don't like baseball. It's basketball for me. So Mm -hmm. you seem to watch all of them. I I do, but I think I am, when I think about it more and more, I love football. There's something I love football. I know I'm a, it's, it's the, the game to me is so technical um, and, and, and you have to have some type of drive and passion to do a sport like that, right. you know, and I think I'm just so intrigued by that mindset and, you know, those moments where it's like the technicality of the quarterback and having to read the field or, you know, it's just like, it's a lot that goes into it that I love. And then the excitement, the fans, like yeah, you go to a game and you, I just, I mean, like it's, it's the best, you know, I've been the, um, Obviously, I, I had season tickets to the Dolphins. I gave them up for now, but I'll be back. Um, but I've gone to a game in San Francisco. That was uh-huh. crazy at the 49th. At the, not their, their old stadium. A not candlestick. The new one. candlestick. Yeah, I went to Candlesticks. Oh, my gosh. Those fans are bananas. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's a, it's a, I just love it, you know. And basketball, I think, would fall right there because I love basketball, too, though. Yeah. I love it, too. I mean... My son's I, a little baller I, right now, so. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. Um, flying back from L.A. up to the Bay Area once. And it was during football season. It was a Sunday morning early flight. It was full of Raiders fans. Those guys were nuts. So L.A. Raider fans flying up for the game. It was crazy on the plane. Crazy, right? Yeah. I know. Football I know. fans are the craziest. Yeah, but no, but then when I lived in LA, I went to a few Lakers game. I went to a Clippers game. That I mean, it's been it's crazy too, though. It, yeah, that whole vibe, that excitement of the fans. Yeah, it's just nothing like it. I know. Have you ever been to a Boston game? A basketball no. game in Boston? No. <laughs> <laughs> that is the craziest place I've ever seen a game. It was a blast, though. They okay. are some passionate fans. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to put that on my list. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. Well, this has been great, Marcella. I, it'll be great when I can actually go to Miami, we can hang out. I'll take you to that Mexican restaurant. Maybe not that yeah. one. By then, by the time you come, I'll probably fall in love with something else, but yeah, I love Mexican it sounds great. So, so thank you very much for your time today. I really appreciate yeah. it. It's been fun. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Karen. <laughs>